Here is the setup for the second scenario in uh, Wellington's victory. You are obviously seeing here from uh, the side of the French forces arrayed here. This scenario is called Let Hay Saint, and uh, this is that's the actual hex of the farm, and these are these um, obstructed hex sides, so like walls, hedges, etc. No, sorry, that's the that's a wall. This is the actual hex of the farm. Some impassable hex sides. Um, you can see these browner areas are higher terrain, and the higher the darker brown is the highest. These white areas are the lowest terrain. Um, and you can see this is a uh, Dulon's core, the first core, lined up here. There's a second a unit of the second core here. Uh, I should say a regiment. That's two brigades. These are each regiments, two brigades each. You have light cavalry here, and two. Uh, I think divisions, or is that a division with two brigades of heavy cavalry, uh, and some. Uh, three artillery batteries there. Now um, this scenario is uh, you have uh, an artillery unit there and these artillery units are normally dotted uh, along here I guess attached to each brigade and then some horse cavalry which normally starts um, the game here but for this scenario they're set up within five hexes of, of this hex um, ready for, as a grand battery, ready for a heavy bombardment on the Allied line. Now, because it is within five hexes of this hex, you get a bit of a choice. You could sort of set up on this ridge, or you could set forward like that, or or, or kind of diagonally like this, facing this way. So this way, you obviously get the cl cl closest targets, including these um Dutch units here, which. So a couple of them have um, efficiency, which is also a morale rating of two. So you could quite handily send them packing. Plus, um, they're easily within line of sight with this kind of setup. Um, so this simulates the massed artillery battery at the start of Durlon's uh, famous attack. And uh, similarly, there's another rule which gives um, the French units a double move. At the beginning of the game you can normally do the grand tactical double move but you have to be nine hexes or more away at all points from the enemy this will get them this will get the infantry basically up to around about this line some of them will have to go down a bit up a bit so it's not going to be just a smooth forward march so um this scenario uh almost completes the setup it's um if you consider the Ugamont now here's Ugamont you may have been watching the Ugamont um uh, videos um there you can see there's the farm itself here's all the garden etc and um there obviously there were British and King's German Legion and so forth forces lined up along here to complete sort of the ridge line defence of Wellington there and skirmishers scattered here. Now only two of these skirmishers are set up for this second scenario because um, you see this plexiglass sheet are laid there that delineates the edge, the map edge as it were for this scenario. So there's only these two skirmishers might feasibly come into play if um, uh, as, as these march up here and similarly this is the the line of the other side of the, the, the edge of the map as it were for the other side now so what that means is is um although uh, the french have cavalry cavalry there's no grand flanking maneuvers that are going to be happening in this scenario it just is that main attack up the front so we're all set up for that. The idea is in this scenario, we're now going to learn, um, apart from some more about attacking combined arms, because here um, the artillery is going to be a lot more useful than they were in that closed in confines of the Ugamont scenario. Um, but And we also have the cavalry. So I'll be using the cavalry rules for the first time. 
Um, so that is the sighting position as we set up. You can see um, there's skirmishers here and um, the Dutch also have some, they actually have a battalion in village here, La Haye here and Smohain, Smohain there. These are disordered at start because um, battalions are disordered if they sit in a constructed terrain like villages. So what do we have on Wellington's side? We have um, some horse artillery here, light cavalry, more light cavalry. Then we have the uh, Hanoverians here, which are not such stolid troops as the rest of the Anglo-Allied line. So the Hanoverians here. Um, we have a backstop here of an elite unit, a couple of elites and a couple of straight line um, British units. Uh, the same here. So this is, um, there's Kempf here, Rogers Artillery here, Ross um, Artillery, Horse Battery Artillery. We have skirmishers themselves in Sant and King's German Legion back here under Du Ompeter. Ompeter is the commander here. Now you notice we have Hanoverians here. We have some more Hanoverians here. Now some of those are quite big units, six strength points. And these ones are actually better morale than these units. So that is a weak point in the line. These are a weak point in the line. There's a bit of a backstop there. But that looks like a good place to go through as the French. Unfortunately, as you can see, the mass batteries here, I guess, to sort of sort out Lysant and make a hole here. Um, it's a shame. I would, if it, if it was free to me, I think I would have just set up my batteries here and sort of tried to go cut the corner of the line rather than go straight through the middle. But that's as it may. Um, so we have... Uh, Third Division Brits here, like I said, Hanoverians here, and then we have heavy cavalry here. So Uxbridge is here with the heavy cavalry on either side, placed in there so that he can activate both of those if and when. They've got some horse artillery here. We have uh, artillery, Hanoverian artillery here, horse artillery, and some of the Sixth Division here. Now, um, most of these units are what's in the reserve corps, as it were, on the British side. Wellington himself is here. He's in charge of the reserve. Um, the Dutch and the Hanoverians are, are in... Ah, it's interesting, the command structure of the anglo Allied side. So, for example, these Hanoverians are within the reserve corps. So Wellington could release them and so forth. These um, Hanoverians are in the First Corps. That's why they're over here with other First Corps Kings German Legion and First Corps um, Anglo-Allied, which was continued through here in the Ugamont scenario. So I can't remember their commander, was it? Um, it wasn't picked. Um, Okay, anyway, no matter for now. Um, all, all we need to, yeah, so Picton is the commander of the 5th Division of the Reserve Corps. Um, these units are in the 5th Division. These are, these are the Reserve Corps here, and so are these. And so, in fact, are these Hanoverians. So Picton's basically in charge of this wing. And then I guess we have the, the first corps moving over this side. Yeah, so in the Ugamont scenario, we saw um, some of the first corps and the second corps. Here we've got the reserve corps and uh, some of the first corps. So... Um, in the first scenario, Hill was really the overall commander, the highest level commander of the second corps. Here we've got Wellington, and then um, we have Picton, um, which I will just show you over here. 
these are commanders who are not on the map. This is a game turn track. But so basically Picton's in charge of um the fifth division of the reserve corps. So he can be committed by Wellington. And when, and, uh, and at the same and then I think at the same time he can then commit others of these units. Or perhaps no, I think it does take a turn's delay. So he'll be committed, then he would commit um Somerset of the Cavalry, Pack, Vivian, etc., etc. Then we have um from the first corps we have Alan here from the third division with his sub commanders here and Perponcher of the ne Netherlands first corps there is a high level commander with his sub commander there. So um these lower level commanders are the ones that would actually command the brigades. These are the brigade commanders and these are sort of their um, senior commanders but below Wellington um, and uh, similarly on the French side maybe I should that just doesn't show you much does it let's go in okay maybe that's as far as I can zoom um, we've got Delon here and these are all you have the um, Division commanders like Alex and then two brigade commanders under each of them, etc, etc, etc. Then we have Bachelet who's from the 2nd Corps. That was um, this section here. And then we have um, Milaud of the 4th Cavalry Corps with some uh, division regimental commanders there. So these aren't on the map because these those fellows are not committed yet. But um, there's a bit of an anomaly within the rules in that um, the game turn, the first game turn starts after the French um, phase when they would commit units and they allowed this double move, but without being committed, you can't move. So we have to assume that you can commit some of these French units at the start. Now, the only leader on board at the moment is Ney. So um, he's positioned so that I can have commitment of three of... I'm going to commit these first three brigades, keep the second line in reserve, and these ones will have to wait until Ney can move over and get them in his range to commit them the next turn. So that will be a slight sort of echelon. These ones will wait. Um, these first line will move up and then this one will follow in the second turn so a slight echelon sort of that direction is the plan and it's probably going to be a French slaughter and I'm not really trying to finesse the plan and you know find out the best way to do it because it is a learning scenario it's the second scenario the third scenario is called Plan Sinoi and you can't see that, so the map's folded over. There's two more sort of folds of this map underneath. Um, but over there, about over here, is Plant Sinoi, and that being where the Prussians arrived. So the third um, sort of uh, smaller scenario is, or beginner's scenario, is that one. So you're looking at the Prussians because apparently they have particular characteristics. So it's worth getting to know before you launch into the whole main scenario where... Um, you would have this map with, as I said, another wing folded out there. And similarly, um, I think just one more fold out on that side, um, which starts at the historical start. And then there's one more scenario um, given in the rules, which is um, an optional early start scenario, which um, is probably the most interesting one to play, judging... From some comments I've read and just thinking about it because it gives Napoleon more time to you know, move up around the flanks for example and the size of playing field that you get here certainly allows you to do that um, that's more or less the limit of Wellington's line on his right his left reaching to about there and you can see there's, there's a lot more map especially on this side is available for manoeuvre so um anyway but before we get to that this is the scenario we're playing now um, i'm particularly interested in two characters one is um picton who's waiting off there 
to be committed. Um, because in my old hometown of Bristol, there was a Picton Street, which is a favourite street and a very sort of attractive street. And it's also kind of like, has like health food shops, alternative cafes and that kind of thing. So a very interesting street. Um, always been sort of within range of where I've lived in Bristol. So a, a favourite street that, you know, it was somewhat, uh, it was like interesting. Okay, Picton, who was Picton? I never knew as a child growing up. And then coming back into Wargaming, I find out he, he was that fellow. And uh, this is probably um, the battle that caused that street to be named after him. I would imagine, if not, I, I haven't really heard him from any other battle particularly. Now, I can't remember if he's the fellow who lost his leg or... But anyway, we can get back to that. So I'm um, particularly interested in Picton. And also over here is Mercer's um, horse artillery um, battery. Now that's interesting for everyone who might have read his his memoir. So he wrote a memoir of the days of of Waterloo. Well, his time as a a member of the um, the forces in on the continent so a bit before waterloo happened because he was there as part of the occupying force in the interim while napoleon was on what was it elba and um and is is he writes really really well and the terrific descriptions of the battle some of which are quoted in the book that kind of got me going to play this again um but also, like, ha at least half his book is kind of like a travelogue. So, because being an officer, he'd say, right, I quartered my fellows there, and then I trotted off to look at the le the latest picturesque spot or abbey or visited the local count or went into town to see what that was like. And he describes, a wonderful way of describing the places, you know, eye for architecture and furniture and all that sort of thing. So very interesting kind of gentlemanly account of... um what is in part some horrific experiences so yeah his um battery was in the thick of it um i'm not exactly sure if they they came down here or actually were posted here eventually um yeah i guess it was forward of here so it'd be interesting to see him in action it's interesting you know when your cardboard comes to life because the name on that counter has got all that background to it for me I've got quite a vivid picture of, as much as I can, of what that fellow was like, you know, what goes on in his mind. And, um, it, yeah, it's great to have that added. And then Picton, that's more just a sort of personal reminiscence. It puts some fleshes out the background of my youth. So um, that's enough about this. Um be interesting to see if and when these reserves have to come in, if that cavalry, heavy cavalry here and light cavalry here, are if and when they are deployed. Um, I think the general plan will be um, to fire off the artillery, uh, bring up maybe... I think those light cavalry have to stay to sort of ward those light cavalry, bring up some of the heavy cavalry, get these fellows in charge zones, see if they go into square, send up some more balls against them, and then before the cavalry charge, have the infantry go in. Now, I'm, I'm pausing there because... From my readings of the cavalry rules that I just had, um, what happens is that as you send your cavalry up, you put a charge zone, which is basically a triangle of stretching six hexes out. And units in that charge zone, they move more slowly, and which is apparently to um, simulate the, uh, the, the faster speed of charging cavalry. And also have to take morale checks what what we want with the cavalry is to um ask those fellows to go into square so that we can destroy them more easily <laughs> with the cannon shot but my question is will they actually go into square unless there's a charge 
um, zone placed down. And if there is a charge zone placed down, then the cavalry have to charge. They don't necessarily have to hit those fellows we're sort of pointing at, but someone, I think, within the charge zone. They have to charge them, and that's not what we want. We want the cavalry to go up to act as a threat, to cause them to go into square, but not to charge, unless it seems propitious to do so. So I have to see how that works. It might just be that just having the cavalry sitting there without declaring a charge um, invites units to form square. And of course, if they don't form square, then I think we would have to charge anyway. We'll see. So this will be a kind of inept um, wargaming of the Battle of Waterloo in the sense of um, trying things out. And I, but I do hope to make it to learn from it to make my subsequent play of the full scenario better. Um, you know, a, a reasonable kind of general's um, effort. It's nice to have these uh, beginner scenarios because often, you know, I'm sort of slowly playing through my collection. I get out a game and I'm I'm learning it as I play it, and so I play it once and then I move on to another game. So when it r really it would deserve learning the playing, learning the game through with a playthrough, then playing it again at least once, saying ah now I know more what to do. So here I'm getting that opportunity before I get up to the full battle.